Hey, everybody. It is Thursday night. Greetings and salutations, my friends. Possible deniability. The Christmas edition. Your two favorite elves hanging out. We're one elf short. We're elfless. Uh, he's His computer is updating. Hey, everybody. So, so he says. <laughs> Greetings and salutations. Maybe. So I don't know. He says. Uh, I, don't know Not to Not to... I don't know how long it takes to do that. So, uh, for right now, it's Johnny and I. Eventually, Brooke's going to pop in. Uh, and when he does, we can rib him about it. So, uh, oh, yeah. Johnny, how is every little thing? It's fantastic. Um, I uh, act like he's not here. Act like you didn't That's see right. him. I didn't see him. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I. Um, start vacation tomorrow so nice. there you go all right yep can't beat it brooke, brooke, brooke are you there i am here <laughs> where you're, you there's no face that's well you know you're that's fine. fine we've got johnny he, johnny is the face you know so you can't be on I, our show unless you have a santa hat brooke it's it, it, santa hat yes well i was halfway there is it a halfway there? <laughs> Darn! I <lost> it. <laughs> Hello, you became mustache on top of your real mustache. Perfect. On top of the real mustache. Yeah, like everything's fine now. Everything's perfectly okay. Everything. How? What was wrong with your computer? Um, it's, it's, a, Mac. it's a Mac. That's no, wrong. that's not at all true. It is a Mac, but woohoo! I. I got a new Mac um, recently, and that's been fantastic. And I've been keeping it as pristine as possible, uh, which is awesome. And then I um, didn't do the last update. And so when I popped it open today, it was like, hey, you got to do an update. I was like, dang it. So it is doing it is doing a it is doing an update and taking its own sweet time with it, which is cool. But, you know, yeah. Yeah, so I grabbed the other. I grabbed the other one, and bam! Now here we are. There we go. Hey Johnny, did you finish watching Doctor Who? Did you watch the third one? I still haven't. No, I still have not watched. I know. To think, it's been busy. It's been recklessly busy, especially at work. I have to prep for being on vacation, so yeah, I have to. I thought you'd go home stuff and watch it Sunday night after the show. After we. I was party. going to. I was going to. And then, I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's what happened. That, I, I'm being honest. That's that's what I happened. Just can't, I just came can't. home. I sat down on, on the couch and I debated nap or fight to stay awake until it's time to go to bed. Because recording session was so awesome, it, it zapped me. It was it was a, it was a really good session. Yeah, it was. It, but it was worth the. It, it's the the you wait till you see it. It's so good. Mm -hmm. We were talking about how you know how does it compare to the fiftieth anniversary 10 years ago but this was three separate you know shows mm -hmm. and each one was better than the the previous uh oh. I was seeing uh Chudigawa and, and you know what happens there with with him yeah this the second one was was ugh, back to its roots of just horrifying and and a little bottle episode with just Dr and Donna so good so good but anyway do watch it because we need to talk about it at some point. Who's um who's on the writing team this season? Do we know? Uh, well, we got we got Russell Davies. Russell T. Davies, Davies is back. back. That's right. That's right. Yeah. I knew that as soon as you said it. When I listen to podcasters and YouTubers talk about it that are from British, um, they they will say one of them said Russell T. Davies. Oh, I almost said Davies Davis. So I guess you pronounce that Davis in British. I don't speak British. Huh. I don't know. I, yeah, I've, I've, always know. I've always I've heard of Davies. I've never heard it anywhere. Yeah, and now I'm hearing I've all the British people even say Davies. I've never heard. Yeah, I'm hearing all the British people now say Davis. Weird. Because well, I think David Tennant called it Davies. So yeah, yeah, he's Scottish, not British. But he's Scottish. Well, yes, he, he's British. He it's all 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 Scots are British. <laughs> Michael, shh. Not, not the other way around. 
He's he's not English. He's Scottish. That's what you meant. All Scots are British, and all British are Scottish. No, not all Brits are Scottish. <laughs> all Scots, all Scots, Scots are British. Exist, and all people exist. <laughs> hey, do you want to hear my weird, um, my my weird, timey wimey? Are we in a, a simulation? The future is now. Moment that happened. Um, just uh, last week and this week to me? No. I know you do. No, no, I don't. Michael, have you watched? <laughs> Go for guys, it. Whatever. Guys late. Guys late for the 15th time, and they're going to rip him. Anyway, so. <laughs> <laughs> so in a weird, like, blue car type of um, type of moment, um, uh, the other just, day. Uh, last week and this sorry week. about that. The other day, um, I came across a blurb of data on Star Trek The Next Generation. I think it was probably due to the Israel-Hamas conflict, talking about um, the Irish unification of 2024. Yeah. And now, in the news, because of you know some protests that popped up and stuff, that is suddenly a discussion that I'm seeing pop into different threads and it could just be the internet, you know, overlords listening to the things that I'm listening to, but I'm like, well, Star Trek do it again. Right. Uh, and, uh, and we have some type of Northern Ireland but negotiating with UK for a unified Ireland in 2024, 2025. Yeah. So, but at the time, uh, Ireland, there was no peace in Ireland. It wasn't until '96 that, so that that's what he's actually referring to was exactly was the 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 terrorist uh, activity in in Ireland and how it eventually led led to, and right, yet, right, and yet there's actually been technically since the peace accords of, of 1996, I believe it was, um, which of course hadn't happened yet when Star Trek: The Next Generation came out, so. Yeah, yes. Yeah. I remember hearing that and going, "Hey, that's a, you know, that's a dated piece uh, of history." Yeah. Speaking of the peace accords and Star Trek, did you hear about the Klingon whose dad died at Kittimer? All our fathers died at Kittimer. Oh. That's it. That's the joke. Yeah, that's the joke. Um, you know, so I didn't go over the first thing you told it either. I do want to say the reason the reason I'm so tired today. I actually, of course, we <laughs> we had our membership drive this morning. And this afternoon, I was the uh, announcer for a, the spelling bee at my, oh. at my wife's former uh, elementary school. Mm -hmm. and at the one she used to teach at or the one she used to attend? The one she used to teach at. And, okay, very good. And the, it came – it was two girls, and they just kept going back and forth. We were like – they were almost close to dismissing the children. And they were like, go to the back page. And give them the really hard question. <laughs> Just up Say words. man and wife. Man and wife. So, uh, yeah, came down to two, two uh, young ladies. Just, just like I said, back and forth. Just couldn't. I mean, they weren't missing any of them. So, really, really <laughs> impressive. But, yeah, that's that, that kind of wore me out. Anyway, trivia. Woohoo! Trivia. Trivia. The chat room is, is, is rocking. I'm going to do, while Michael's getting the cards, I'm going to do a... A throwback comment earlier in the chat johnny you mentioned about chick-fil-a becoming a tradition mm -hmm. yeah at your house on, same. on pd nights yeah yeah same yeah same. Really? Yeah. yeah 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 no it's not happening tonight because the wife's schedule is crazy and my mm -hmm. schedule is crazy uh but yeah yeah that is weird that uh like oh, let's just grab chick-fil-a and so do we do chick -fil -A yeah it's just this big it's, it's like hey it's pd do you want to wait till afterwards and grab some dinner and it's like oh let's just order something and it's always like it's coincidentally like a few times in a row it was we haven't had this in a while it's quick and easy let's just grab it and we have you know we door dash it and so <laughs> now it's like we have to do it it's pd night we even thought like hey you want to get chick-fil-a no it's not it's not a pd night <laughs> oh, okay. That's well, wait. Yeah, yeah. See, we, we, we do Chick Fil A on the uh, first the first Wednesday night of the month at our church. Very there cool. Which is about, everyone just gets a whole bunch of Chick Fil A sandwiches. It's great. Okay, uh, like it. here we go. Trivia. Uh, Ruffles wants us to do this before uh, Andrew wakes up. There we go. There we go. Uh, <laughs> so we're gonna start out with magic and miscellany. The Woo! spell, 
the spell moonbeam engulfs creatures in ghostly flames that cause what kind of damage? The spell moonbeam engulfs creatures in ghostly flames that cause what kind of damage? Sunburn. Spaghetti. It gives them a sunburn. Radioactive. No way. That's not. I've ever, I even remember hearing somebody say that you could actually get like a moon tan. Like I've heard that laid out in front, but you like also risk like going insane. I have <laughs> been heard that. If you, if you lay, if you lay, you could like actually get a tan from the moon. Yeah, you lay in front of a full moon. But of course, it, <laughs> now this last time that we had a, a couple of major eclipses in, in the past year, eighteen months. Have you heard? that if you eat vegetables that were harvested during that cycle of the eclipse, that it was like damaged food and it could cause you to get so sick you could almost die. And, and Well, yes, I usually get my food from a medieval vendor. Yes. Um, who... <laughs> yeah. yeah. I know. It was like, yeah, it was, it was like, what, I mean, this, this is also, you know, you can all, it just, just Google, um, uh, reasons to not get the vaccine, and I'm sure you'll find a link. <laughs> yeah, sure. I was gonna say, <laughs> Two links I'm away. I'm sure <laughs> were harvested by the eclipse of a full moon. You know, yeah. yeah. And, I, and, I try, and I try not to get any kind of advice from flat earthers. Yes. Um, yeah. What do we got here but somewhere? Michael, looks do like the research. Ruffles and Falcor oh. got it first. Radiant. Yep. Radiant damage. Yes, indeed. Um... <laughs> Uh, you know, oh, I'm probably gonna get letters from that one. I'm sure. Okay, who cares? <laughs> um, Only smart people watch our show, Michael. I hope so. Okay. Oh, see now, 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 all the letters will come to me for that one. <laughs> all right, here we go. History, history. Oh, in fact, we're gonna talk a little history. We're gonna talk a little D and D history tonight. Woo-hoo! Are you ready for it? We're gonna talk a little bit of D and D history. Okay, I'm ready to mute my mic. So, who were the original Wizards three in? Ed Greenwood's Dragon Magazine column. Who were the original Wizards oh. 3 in Ed Greenwood's Dragon Magazine column? I had this novel of short stories. Wow. I'm glad it was within reach. This, 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 might but, be, this might be difficult, but we'll find out if anyone can get even close to this. Isn't that, isn't that so crazy that I can kind of see the font text on the page, right? Yeah. For like, you know, that weekly letter or week monthly 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 installment thing gosh i have some crazy guesses but i couldn't tell you for sure though this is good this is good snap, snap crackle, crackle, crackle. Bob. <laughs> oh my gosh s jones s jones with the win right off the bat what? yes Woo! delmar elminster and mordenkainen whoa cha, 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 cha. dude uh. That's, That's awesome. That is impressive, S. Jones. That, that too is impressive. that it's is too awesome. Impressive. <laughs> I was pretty sure Elderminster was one. I thought maybe Bixby was one, but I didn't have any idea who the third one would be. Bixby. So, yes, thank you, that, Bixby. Yes, Bill Bixby, the Bill Incredible Bixby. Hulk, That's right. the Wizard. He was really. Oh, we blew it. <laughs> Andrew's here. Tell me why? Why? Why was he David Banner? Dr. David Banner in the show and not Bruce Banner. I have no idea. I know. There has to be a reason, but no one's been able to tell me. So I don't know. There is. I blame the lawyers. No, I've actually I've actually heard why there's there's a reason for for it, and I can't remember what it was, but there was a there was a whole article on it years ago about why he was David versus Bruce. Hmm. Uh, It's sort of like a Frankenstein. Somebody thought it for Henry swap. Every once in a while, depending on where you know where you're seeing Frankenstein. Yeah. Now his yeah. now they did I did they think they actually did show his like gravestone that did actually say like Bruce Bruce David, David Banner. Banner. Yes. Yes. And so it, it well, I, they they did have a reason for but I don't know what it was Doctor David Banner anyway. Doctor David Banner. Woo. Um. History. No monsters. Which of the following is not a type of demon? Mains, Lamia, Dretch, Vrock, Quasit. Which of the following is not a type of demon? Mains, Lamia, Dretch, Vrock, Quasit. 
Yes. <laughs> how do you spell how do you spell the first one? Uh Mains, M-A-N-E-S. M-A-N-E-S, okay. I don't know how to spell closet. C double O. K W A Z I T. And oh my gosh, look at that. Lom S. Jones again. Woo-hoo! Who is coming? That? No school like the old school right. tonight. Lamias are, uh, they are actually, uh, they are creatures of a demon lord, the creations of a demon lord, but they are classified as monstrosities. And who was the Lamia that we fought, that we fought in Red Dirt D&D? Um, Early on. Yeah, right. Um, yeah. Made a coat. Out of them, it's right. we did make a coat out of her, and it was llama llama duck, uh, right there with the yodis and the yeah. battle. I remember where it was. I can't remember. Oh. Where it was. Anyway, oh well. Her name doesn't matter. She's gone to history. Uh-huh. Johnny, you were on that boat. What was we were trying to figure out how old that would have had to be because of uh, that was five thousand years. Yeah, Zonimus hanging out, and if and if that Lamia was in the cohorts with uh, with all the folks, so I'm anyway. still trying to figure out if it was just Zonimus or not. Yeah, so, <laughs> still, the, the, the Dalai Lamia. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We have the quantum leap moment. Then in recent episodes, we have had the how much are we affecting time oh, and God. did we affect it or was no, it always I, here, that way? Here's, here's what I call the most recent episodes. If you pee in your sleep, if, if you pee in your dream, do you pee in real life? Right. <laughs> and that's what I'm trying to think. It's, it, uh, <sighs> okay. Adventures. Which <laughs> D&D tournament blending science fiction and fantasy did Gary Gygax run at the 1976 Origins Convention? Someone's going to get this fast. Which D&D tournament Blending science fiction and fantasy, did Gary Gygax run at the 1976 Origins Convention? Come on, guys. I bet you S. Jones can get it right off the bat. When you read it the second time, my brain heard an important fact, uh-huh. and I changed my answer in my brain. Yep. So, yep. yep, yep, yep. Woo! Here's a clue. I've talked about it on this show many times. We I, have. I, I ran it on our Saturday Night Group. I know. Hint. We hint. I think we should explore some hints if that's you know. <laughs> no, Great spell guess, ruffles, ruffles but spell jammer doesn't happen until like eighty five. Yeah. So. S. <laughs> Jones. Great guess though. S. Jones, look at that. Expedition to the Barrier Peaks. Whoa! Right, oh man. Where is S. Jones now? That's what three in a row. Ooh, three in a row. He is having he is having an Andrew type of night. So he is cleaning house so far. I got eaten by there a, frog, a... Frog, frog, frog frog hemoth. Yeah, that thing is horrible. <laughs> I actually swallowed two of the because I, I was DMing and they swallowed two of the party members. Yep. Was, I think, the picture of the giant toad with just the guy's legs sticking out. I think that was in the monster manual, wasn't it? I thought it was in Barrier Peaks. And maybe, or I'm trying to remember where that artwork is at. If well, it's I, in I Barrier Peaks, I don't know if, I, or if it's I, underneath. I don't remember the legs sticking out, but I do remember the picture of the frog hemoth. In the, yeah. Um, oh, great stuff. <laughs> What was what was the name of your character? That's a fantastic quiz. Poop. Poop eventually. Fabulous. All right. No characters. one can tell us because none of those characters made it out alive. I'm no. assuming. I don't know. Uh, okay. Characters. Alasra Silverhand, better known as the Symbiol Witch Queen of Aglarond is a member of which famous group of siblings in Faerun? This is another one. If you guys know your stuff, you're going to know this one. Alasra Silverhand, better known as Symbol, which queen of Aglarond is a member of which famous group of siblings in Faerun? The Osmond family. The Osmonds. Wow. 
They did the other day. I saw it was so funny. It was like, um, I guess uh, Donny Osmond turned like sixty four or something like that the other day. What? Yeah. Okay. You know, I turned sixty four, and and uh, someone goes uh, sent a picture of of, of uh, I can't believe Donny Osmond sixty four, and it was a picture of um, oh the guy from Chips. <laughs> Poncherello? <laughs> yeah. Poncherello? <laughs> yeah. I'm Good old Ponch. What's that? Good old Ponch. Ponch. Ponch and John. <laughs> anyway. Yeah, I was like, what, do you not know what Donny Osmond looks like? Okay. Um, uh, anyone? Have we Eric got Estrada. anybody? Eric Estrada. Grats Eric and loss. Eric Estrada, that's it. Yeah. Eric Estrada, good job, good job, good job. Uh, we still don't have an answer here. I know. Uh, Grass, Loth, the Lady of Pain. It, it, we're actually looking for. Uh, it says um, <laughs> which famous group of siblings in <clears throat> that helps out there. Ah. Astra. Silverhand, better known as the symbol Witch Queen of Aglaron, is a member of which famous group of siblings in Faerun? So it is Donnie and Marie. Uh, of course, they're part uh, Raffles and Falcor, the Partridge family. The Partridge family. <laughs> no, those are druids. Um... No idea. I don't think we got I... it. We may have stumped. We may have stumped we may people. Have stumped them. Marsha, Marsha, Marsha. Yeah. Now, see, I I actually got it wrong in my head. Well, well, oh, 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 how you're so close, but no. The silver brother and sisters. <laughs> my first thought was this is... it was the uh, Elminster's daughters, because I think she is Elmin. She's one of Elminster's daughters. Oh, she's a silver hand. Huh. But that's not the answer they give. So well this this is where the chat starts going, the copper twins, the golden boys, you know. They start, know. They start, What's they the start throwing out the all the medals. Is the seven <laughs> sisters. Oh which were the Elminster's daughters. So I don't know. I, I don't know why that, that was weird. Anyway, hard one. Hard one, guys. Sorry about that. Here we go. Uh let's go with cosmology as our final question. In Dark Sun. Anyone? All right. Yay. Yeah. Clerics do not worship gods, but instead channel their power from what other source? In Dark Sun, clerics do not worship gods, but instead channel their power from what other source? Pink Floyd. Dirt and dust. <laughs> The Seven Sisters, Rebels and Falcor. <laughs> Unless the lag is so bad for him tonight that he's just now answering the previous one. Uh, I don't want to say. Uh, we need more. Yeah, Ruffles and Falcor, I think you're on long, but we need a little bit more than that. Wait. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Living nature. <laughs> Beer. Beer. <laughs> there is uh in uh I think it's one of the Cobalt Press third party ones, they have a cleric that is of the domain of beer. Yeah, Pathfinder has uh Pathfinder Kaden. has Caden. Caden, yeah. Yeah. That's, yep. Uh, my bard in that last adventure I did uh with my Tuesday night group is a bard that worshiped Caden. <laughs> and it, it it paid off a few times. Uh, it's not life force. In Dark Sun, clerics do not worship gods, but instead channel their power from what other source? Gosh, I would have thought that Ruffles and Falcor has 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 gotten it, but there's a nuance there that evidently Michael Cross is keeping close to the chest yeah, on the card. Nice. So. Yeah. I know what it is. I know what it is. Okay. Uh, so I'm going to say we're getting really close to 
saying, calling it. So, uh, Johnny, what is it? The elements. That is the elements. Earth, air, water, and fire. Oh. Yeah. There are four elemental spheres, earth, air, water, and fire, and a general sphere called cosmos. So not 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 so much on the water sometimes some places, but yeah. 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 But that's really kind of cool. It's I mean, good I've, stuff. Tell your friends. Um okay. so what else? What are we talking about tonight? Well, you know, there was, I saw a little, um, I saw a little thing that was interesting. Um, and I don't know how long they've been doing this, but, um, they, uh, there's a, there's a, uh, an academy, a group of people that they, that they, uh, want to, want to, um, persevere is the word that is trying to come out of my mouth. Preserve. Thank you. They want to preserve films that are important to, the cultural phenomenon of American culture. And there were some uh, interesting um, films that were on this year's nomination list. I was, I was surprised. And, and then also like, you know, just really happy with, um, with some nerd culture things that, that mm -hmm. we're starting to see popping up on the national film registry. Mm -hmm. So um, I think the one that, kind of made me go yes the most is um of the 25 films selected for the national film registry this year terminator 2 judgment yeah. day is on that list yeah. with terminator 2 uh possibly one of the few where you can say the sequel was actually oh, better yeah. than the original and not saying that the original was bad right yeah. Um, right. It it shined. Of course it was it was also done what 7 years after the original, like 84 to 90 well 5 6 years, 84 to 91. Yeah. I mean it was uh, 1991, uh, yeah. So 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 it was it was quite a, a, a jump between the two, but yeah, Terminator 3 was <coughs> so good. Yeah. So good. Empire Strikes Back, Aliens, Terminator 2. Yeah. yeah. Wrath of Khan, of course. Sure. I mean, those are all yeah, yeah. movies that. Well, it's because even number Trek films don't suck. That's right. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Um, I am saying the other ones kind of do. <laughs> now we we did this we did that story on on NPR just the other day, and of course. Oh, cool! Nightmare Before Christmas. Uh, I I mean, I had the watch. The realization that Nightmare Before Christmas is thirty years old. I'm like, I had the watch from Burger King. I was working at a bar at the time. Wow. <laughs> like, Woo. So, yeah. And yep. then uh, some other good – Apollo 13 was on the list. Yes. Too. That's awesome. Desperately yeah. Seeking Susan. Wow. You know? Like, I remember wow. that movie. I, it's, it was, yeah, Madonna. Madonna. Yeah. Yeah. Was, uh, yeah. yeah. Um, and, Very cool. Uh, and Lady and the Tramp. I'm like, okay, how could, uh, what took you guys so long? Exactly. That's what I thought yeah. too. I'm like, really? It's just now getting on that. We must preserve this. I mean, for the memes alone, you gotta save that yeah. movie. Um, the anyways, spaghetti. Yeah, some some very interesting ones on there, and um, yeah, yeah. It's a, it's a, it's a really yeah. good list. So check those out if you get a chance. Go and see what's in the. And I don't even know. I I, I assume the National Film Registry is somehow connected with the Library of Congress, but so. maybe. I don't I know that, so. but I'm assuming. Yeah. Yeah. So, but I think it's great that they're, they are trying to preserve some of those because, you know, some of those are just sitting on celluloid and it's, they're just, they're, you know, I think it's Walt Disney kind of does its own preserving because all that stuff's on digital now. You can get all that, yes. you can get Lady and the Tramp and all those on Disney Plus. So, um, anyway, good stuff. Layoffs. Oh, my goodness. Layoffs. Layoffs. Woo, man, Horrible. the Cobalt Union is going to be ticked. I know. <laughs> At um, Christmas, even. Of course, that's why we, we have unionized workers. <laughs> that's um, right. That's right. Here at Red Dirt D&D, the Cobalt Union. I do hear that they goof around sometimes and got to be whipped into shape. Yeah. The um, Hasbro announced 1,100 people being laid off. Dude. Right before Christmas? I mean, and that's in addition to like an earlier 900 yeah, from Christmas right? in January, they let 800 go. They announced a thousand and then ended up being only 800. But that time they announced it and it was known to be coming. This time they did not. 
from the reports of of a lot of the designers and such on Twitter, they had no idea this was coming. Yeah, man, and, 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 and they and here's, just had themselves on the back for finishing their Christmas shopping. Yeah, here's, oh. here's the uh, here's the 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 thing that uh, Hasbro. Some of them did hit Wizards of the Coast, uh, and considering D and D is having a banner year uh, for right. sales, uh, Baldur's Gate three, the movie. Um, <clears throat> The the you know there are several books. Um, ha- apparently, D and D is the only thing that's keeping Hasbro afloat. There is some really good evidence in the sales charts that that is the thing. Mm-hmm. I mean, but if you think about it in a way like, you know, back in our day when we needed entertainment, we we needed to buy the GI Joes. We needed to buy mm-hmm. um, Monopoly or or whatever it is we were going to buy you know, and, and play that board game. And now you don't, you don't need that. You've got, you know, the little kids today and million kids today. They just, it's right here on their phone yeah. or of course, you know, uh, on their, on their DS nine or whatever it is that they play with. So, yeah. you know, they also, um, th- there's been a lot of talks about the, so like action figures and collectibles and stuff. So people don't, like like col- hardcore collectors don't go buy a brand spanking new newly minted collector's edition of a thing because it's just because they put a collector's edition stamp on it doesn't necessarily mean it's collector's edition like all the old kinder action figures for star wars those were just toys that were made and they've yeah. become they've become collector's items right. yep so no one's buying so so adults aren't buying modern action figures right kids aren't buying modern action figures they got gi joe they own transformers they own all that so it's just not a it's not a good thing for them. Other people come along and try to buy pieces of the IP over the years recently, and they're not having it. They've tried to make a GI Joe tabletop RPG, while they uh, and Michael Cross get ready to say, "Has Bronies remember they own D and D?" They tried to make it. They tried to make a GI Joe RP, TTRPG and didn't even consider Wizards of the Coast having any part of it. I know. They made their I own know. system, the Spark system, because they made a Transformers one also. And people bought it who were enthusiastic about the IPs, and they were like, "Oh yeah, the book's cool. It was really clunky. Character creation was confusing. My my group didn't play it, but it's sitting on my shelf. And look, I have some GI Joe stuff, and I like GI Joe. Is about what it was summed up to be. So that's gonna make them not want to create more, right. you know, all the accessories that would go with the books. It, it, it's, right, right. It's, yeah. it's, it's, they have it's, such it's, weird it's, strategies. They have so many weird strategies in that company. It's it's I don't, unbelievable. Well, the problem is it's it's people who think that they're still living in the fifties. They're still hoping they can sell a whole bunch of hula hoops and um, right, you know, and Mr. Well, Potato Heads. And I because you you know because that and that, that is the mindset of mm-hmm. Hasbro. They even if it's young people who are younger than us, they have the mindset of people in the fifties that this yeah. is the way we've got to we've got to sell toys. Whereas if you saw the writing on the wall, there's absolutely no reason D and D could not have put Hasbro in the black, because all mm. you got to do is look at what third parties are doing, and do yeah. that. Yeah. There, there are we lost we lost when Cloud uh, uh, when Gale Force Nine stopped doing cards. What three years ago? Where are you, Wizards? Why do we, Why do I not have your spell cards? You know, Michael, maybe they are kind of doing what third-party publishers do. I mean, they're very, very successful, and they don't have hundreds of thousands of employees. I mean, Paizo is employed by maybe two dozen people, and then there's like a a bunch of like freelancers that do work for them here and there, and they're doing just fine. Yeah. Maybe they're trying to like shrink that number down. Maybe they're trying to save themselves by reducing payroll. Maybe, but here's the thing. I, I mean, if I wish, I and especially let's look. Okay, let's let's talk about Paizo and let's talk about how much product they put out on a yearly basis. I mean, Wizards. Yeah, I'm glad they put out like what five books this year. Mm-hmm. Excellent. But how many books did Paizo put out this year? All of them. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, and yeah. I mean, they, it's, and, it's probably modules. Mm-hmm. I mean, just boom, boom, and then pawns. Uh, I mean, look at all the accessories they're putting out. If mm-hmm. Wizards of the Coast had just look, I mean, so that's what I'm, I guess this is what bothers me about Hasbro and Wizards of the Coast. And I'm going to get on my soapbox. Yeah. They're sitting in their closet 
It's like they're still sitting in their parents' basement. Playing with their toys, yep. and they're thinking, "Oh, other people must be doing this too. They're playing with my playing with our toys too." How about walking yep. out? How about getting on the internet, finding out what your competitors are doing, find out what your mm-hmm. third your third party mm-hmm. publishers are doing. If they did half yeah. the stuff the third party publishers and their competitors did, they'd be in the black right now. I mean, pay That's attention ex- to what things Go. the buzz on the buzz on social media. Look at what Kickstarters are out there doing. There, there are Kickstarters. I mean, I, I just backed a, it's a board game, but I just backed a Beetle and Grimm board game that like just blew up. Look what uh, Matt Colville, M- uh-huh. MCDM. Yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah. At his freaking Look. Kickstarter, uh, the the DC20 uh, game system that's coming out, it looks really interesting. Yeah, it's. it's yeah. Look at what's on I Etsy. Mean, they're, they're, not, they're not paying attention. Michael's, like you said, they don't realize that they own d I know. I think they, they don't realize anything. I, I mean, it's, it's like they, they're very self contained in a bubble. And they're in the parents' there's the basement whole... doing nothing. Yeah, yeah it, it's and that, it's... and you have these other companies that that have people in their leadership team uh, way high up, or at least trust the game design folks. Because once you buy once you buy the source book, whether it's Cobalt Press or Paizo or D and D, you know, once I buy that source book then I want to play an adventure. So what mm-hmm. are these other adventures, what do these other companies all do? They're like, hey, you've just bought the Mwangi Expanse, right? You know, the jungle setting or whatever. Uh, so, hey, here's a whole adventure path yeah. that takes you into the Mwangi, right? Well, not know? even that. Go ahead, go on, go on. No, 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 yeah. So, I mean, that's just like, they're, that's how they are producing so much stuff is that may, maybe it's about four source books or so um, across the course of the year, maybe just like two or three across the course of the year, but it's the supplements and not the bloat of like the complete fighter's handbook or the complete clericist or anything like that, but it's just, and here's an adventure to play it. And now we've done that for three months and here's the next adventure. And it's, you know, and then there's accessories and then there's accessories because I look at Cobalt Press. They put out a book, the book Deep Magic. They just recently came out with Deep Magic 2 after uh, after it went on Kickstarter. And Deep Magic 1, as soon as it came out, they had magic cards for them. Yeah. Accessories. Yes. Yeah. And I just. So, Brooke, you mentioned the, the Milwaukee Expanse. Here's something unique about And this is this is a, a perspective I've noticed with, with 5e happening. So in the world of 5e, like, say, for example, like, Dragonlance doesn't exist. And I go by this adventure, and there's no mention of Dragonlance or Kren or Kinder or any of that. And then the next one comes out, the next one comes out. And over the years, all these adventure books and setting books and campaign books come out. And, and new characters that are, you know, NPCs, but deep in the lore. And no mention of, just using it as an example, Dragonlance, Kren, Kinders, the, you know, none of that stuff. And then they put out the Dragonlance book. And now we've got Dragonlance trend a kinder rate all that and then the minute like the day honestly about a week after it launched they started advertising the next book that was coming out and going forward we're not going to see kinder or kren or the lance or anything now let's back up to what you said about paizo and the Mwangi expanse for pathfinder 2 the first official published adventure path a large chunk of it just kind of t- it took you all it took you a lot of places in the world and a large chunk of it was in the Mwangi Expanse, and it was only in a part of the Mwangi Expanse. Uh-huh. Yeah. And then they came out with an adventure later on, completely unconnected, that, that fully took place in the Mwangi Expanse. They came out with a Mwangi Expanse source book, and then there's an upcoming adventure that that ends in the Mwangi Expanse. Right. Yeah. Their world is their their world flows in yeah. and is consistent. Whereas with D and D, it's like let's get pumped about this thing that's going to matter for three months, and then we're going to sell you the next one. And yeah. that's and that's, I think and, that's that is, and, and here's the thing: where where it, where are and I, I there was another person that we used to talk about this all the time. Where are the modules? Dude, yeah, right. I, I mean, I if you yeah. and I know you can buy modules off of it's the deal, DM, the, off DM's guild. But the DM's like, Guild, or, or you can get, or you can get a Adventurers League stuff off of DM's Guild, but I'm talking about on the shelves of game stores. I'm talking yeah. about, and I am talking about accessories. Now, fun was funny was I used to complain that Wizards of the Coast didn't have like a calendar a day. Um, I was like, what if you put a monster a day calendar? Guess what's out now? And Wizards, I looked, I found no. it. 
they are having, for 2024, they have a monster a day calendar. And I'm like, you know what? They're listening to plausible deniability. I think they listen to possible Someone deniability. Someone is listening for to sure. this. And they, and, and they go, and <laughs> someone was the customer. Hey, that's a really good idea. That's right. So that's folks, right. Just make, just make me the CEO of Wizards of the Coast. I'll make you, you know, millions of dollars, guys. Because you are a gamer, right? And that's what yeah. these other companies, Cobalt Press and other places, it just, you know, they have gamers up in their echelon or they've been empowered to listen and make decisions, you know, to those guys who are gamers. And that's how it works. Like I have, I mean, I straight up, my love for Paizo is because it reminds me so much of Greyhawk. It is a living world with connections like johnny said and yeah. um yeah D, D could do that they could oh, yeah. do that completely completely and this was their year to do it especially with baldur's gate 3 yeah. with the movie with i mean uh, there yeah. uh, now now uh, now next year could be phenomenal again here was the thing didn't you one of you show share something about 1999 and layoffs at yeah PSR? yep yep right before yeah. it got sold to wizards yeah. So I went down some, a couple of rabbit holes. Yeah. Um, I've been, I, I just finished, uh, it was actually book on tape, book on tape. There's 1972 <laughs> and a book on tape. Anyway, I, on I, 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 I <laughs> chapter three, doom, <laughs> doom, doom. turn the page now. Doom. Anyways, <laughs> an audio book of, called game wizards, which is uh, the history of D and D. And Gary Gygax and Dave Arneson, really, it's it's nonfiction and you got to love the source, but it's good. It's a little dry in places, but it's good. And now I'm reading Slay and the Dragon um, by Ben Riggs. And so there are just there are so many things. It was, you know, like 1990, um, 1996, I think it was in Christmas, um, you know, and they laid off. Um, a, a bunch of a bunch of workers. It was right before the. It was right before Wizards of the Coast when they were their own entity came in and bought TSR. Yeah, you know, and that this same thing well, happened. Bought, bought D &D um, from TSR. Yeah, 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 yeah. Bought bought that. You know, from from there. Yeah, because they had just TSR had overextended themselves. Um, really, fifteen years, twenty years earlier. Uh, 15 years earlier or so whenever you know like they you know went into like a needlework company and gary gygax is off in hollywood trying to wheel and deal all the things and and some of it worked like the dungeons and dragons cartoon you know but uh and but most of it the was the dragons movie <laughs> yeah 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 <laughs> right um and uh and and so uh, the the you know they say that time or that history doesn't repeat itself but it rhymes you know and yeah. and there's just kind of that thing going on right now where if they would just settle in and focus on their product which that press release said you know something to the effect of we're gonna we're gonna focus on we're gonna focus on on making games fun again or we're gonna focus on something about you know, focus on play. Cause that's what, that's what we do best. I have something mm -hmm. like that in their press release, but uh, you know, and, and, and again, this is just circum, this is just um, circumstance, but you know, Lorraine Williams was, had taken over kind of through the bloom brothers ousted Gary Gygax about that time. And she was the one that made some really hard decisions trying to save TSR and, they put out some great stuff, but it's just like you were, or just like Johnny was saying, they put out, um, they put out the Oriental adventures, huge success. And then bam, went right with dark sun. And then went bam with the, uh, the Arabian nights, Al Qadim uh, setting. And they didn't give it a chance to settle right back in, back in the, you know, the, it's 87 88 it was just selling books and selling selling products selling selling new worlds and yep. new worlds and new worlds now here's the thing yep. is, what, okay so what would happen how would you guys feel if because they hasbro's already sold e1 their entertainment they're they're basically their video game they they already said you know they've laid off a bunch of Baldur's gate people apparently like the Which people that brought the most successful game of the year they just mm -hmm. fired them what which, happens? which, 
which which back to one thing sorry for interrupting but which is something that tsr did back when they had trouble and all of those people went off all those uh all those people that got laid off went over you know and restarted i think avalon hill maybe you know and and brave and breathed life into the competitive team yeah uh, companies that were almost dead. So anyway, so now all these folks from Baldur's Gate have been laid off. Man, Blizzard or whomever should snatch them up. Yeah. So anyway, go ahead, Michael. You were going to say what happens if Hasbro and this uh, to me, I'm thinking, what if Hasbro sold D and D, sold Wizards of the Coast to maybe a company that would actually care for having the IP, who would know what that to do with the IP? It's the only thing making money for them. They're not going to do it. Nothing. Power Rangers. Is, P, P, the companies have offered to buy Power Rangers time and time again, and they've said no, but and they try to relaunch Power Rangers, and it fails. But here's the thing. I mean, it's the only thing making money for them, but they're also – they might also think we could sell it and make a lot of money right now because it's up here. Sell, yeah. sell, sell high. So They, they could sell right, it and then try to make – yeah, their other IPs – Right, to, you know. Right, yeah. yeah. So, so, so maybe, and here's the thing. I'm, I as soon as you said that, Brooke, as soon as we were talking about that, my first thought was, boy, I hope Hasbro sells Wizards of the Coast. <laughs> right. Either, either sells it, or lets it go. Let Wizards of the Coast buy itself out from Hasbro. Yeah. And wow, and, and I would like to wow. see Wizards of the Coast being its own Get entity, and I think, I think that... under Hasbro. Hasbro yeah. is sucking the life out of Dungeons yeah. and Dragons. It's 100 Hasbro. It's 99 percent Hasbro. Yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. And it, and I'll give that. And it's not. You know how I still lo I love D and D. I love the game. I I'm, I'm not going to stop mm -hmm. playing the game. So, you know, if if people are who are running D and D, and we've got things like Baldur's Gate, we've got the movies, we've got television shows coming out, we've got all this stuff going on, and Hasbro is like just squashing it, mm -hmm. and like. Dude, you've got the 50th anniversary coming out next year. Hasbro, just let it go. Mm -hmm. Let Wizards yeah. go and let it let us do the thing that needs to be done to make D D. Yeah. You know. Because yeah. other companies are doing that for them, right? Like, yeah. you know, like Paizo and Cobalt Press. Paizo's taken some of their most popular adventure paths and have retooled them as 5e and oh, said, Hey guys, do you need something to play? Yeah, I want to get that and play that for our Saturday. Yeah, night. Kingmaker. Yeah, yeah, Kingmaker, fantastic. <laughs> so get and, uh, and, and also Wizards is, Wizards has started putting third party stuff on their um on D and D Beyond. Ah, and, um, if you look, there's if you look at their 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 books, uh, there's the you know their source books, the adventures, and then at the bottom there's third party content. So cool. They're starting to put that out. So, but. It's, Hasbro is just it's it's hurting wizards. It's hurting D and D, and they say they just need to either sell it or let wizards get away. Just so I'm curious to see if what what y'all's opinion is, especially Michael's, because I think he was aware of this opinion in the past. Um, there's a live stream about D and D I used to watch that came on on Tuesday nights, um, and it doesn't exist anymore. But I was in the chat on Twitch for this this show and it talked about D&D &D. and the topic of modules and stuff came up and I said yeah going back to what I said earlier I said it would be great if when the the like the Dragonlance book came out if they were like hey here's the Dragonlance's DM guide here's the Dragonlance oh, cool. player guide here's the Dragonlance setting book so that you can do your homebrew stuff and pull from it and then here's a here's a Dragonlance adventure Oh, our Dragonlance adventure ended at level seven. Well, a year later, here's a level seven to nine little sh short three month adventure to run. So, and and the opinion expressed as a reaction to reading that in the chat from one of the co hosts was D and D players are flat broke and poor and don't have the money to spend on books. However, <laughs> books are popular <laughs> like this, and all they're doing is ignoring the book that came before them. Yeah. And gamers are buying them. So I, I feel like it's, I mean, I know it's like, the, oh, they changed it. I don't like change. I'm not being the grumpy old guy. That was really fun because you could you could really absorb that world and that setting. And, and it could become your thing and yeah. your group's thing. 
Yeah. And now we've got the basis of D&D 5e is Forgotten Realms. But as I joke all the time about it, it's not. It's the Sword Coast. Yeah. So we don't even have like a gigantic fleshed out thing for the main home setting. And then when a right. new when a spell jammer comes out, here's a little bit. And that's at the end. Because Dragonlance is coming. Oh, look out. We've got Planescape. Oh, go away. You know. Yeah, we got Planescape. We got to work on Planescape. Yeah. We got, oh, we got Vecna coming out. Oh, we got, yeah, yeah you're, you're, yeah, absolutely, you're, coming you're out absolutely again. right. Yeah. Um, yeah. And it's always, it's all, it's always going back to, to, um, uh, going back to, uh, the, the Forgotten Well. You're absolutely right. It goes back to the Sword Coast. Um, and, that's why I say there's so much more the wizards could do. They, I, mm -hmm. there is so much there. Their, their hands are their hands are tied somewhere, and for the long it's longest Hasbro. time, I was angry. I was angry at wizards because I thought it was wizards, and I thought it was wizards listening to. I, I feel like they're listening too much in the wrong way to the public. They're not listening the right way. But now I, I see it's Hasbro. It's yeah. don't make <laughs> so Magic the Gathering. Let me tell you what Magic the Gathering has done for a decade. Okay. Now they, they didn't used to do this. Used to it would be, hey, there's a set coming out, and there's 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 gonna be three of them over the course of the year, and the three of them come together for this story, even though it's just a card game, and it's neat. And they like, and now what they're doing is, here's a set of cards in this rule set with these game mechanics, and the day it launches, they start advertising the next one, and there's spoilers for the next one, and there's all the content creators talking about the next one, and the minute it launches, we don't care. Here's the next one. Yeah. And that's just what they're doing. And I've watched D and D become doing, that. Doing the same thing. The you've got to understand yeah. is that it's it's. I've I've it's worked, still, I've, still worked I've worked in corporate America, and, yeah. and 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 that is exactly what happens. Is these people up here, I mean, up in the not not in wizards. I mean, I'm talking about even higher than that. They send their consultants down and say, "You're going to do this, 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 and this," and and then the the CEO of Wizards goes. Why are we doing this, 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 this? Because because you'll be fired. Great, we're gonna do this, this, this exactly what you just said. Yeah. Fabulous. Yep. Um, yep. And the yep. CEO goes and to the people underneath there and says, "We're gonna do this, this, this. Why are we gonna do this? Because we're all gonna be fired if we're not." So it it, it is Hasbro. It is Hasbro. It's the mindset of the fifties, trying to push down its 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 rule of law, and yeah. it's crushing. It's crushing mm -hmm. any creativity that's going on at Wizards, at, whether it's yeah. either Magic or D and D, mm -hmm. and 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 you know, I think I think at least they finally did listen to the people and said, okay, we're not going to do a new edition, right? You know, they finally at least. So the the interesting thing too about the new edition is I feel like there's I feel like I feel like it's been from the beginning such a gray area, and when they did their big thing last year uh, last month. Every, it's like they put up a, a list of everything that was going to come out the next year, and then instantly that list got taken down. And then books went on sale, super cheap. And so the buzz is, of course, all the books are going on sale super cheap. They're not going to be useful anymore when this next, I don't know what to call it. Let's just use the word edition comes out. But it's, and everyone's like, oh, no, it's not a new edition. It's not a new, I know, Michael. I know you're very no, passionate it's about It's not going to be a new edition. I mean, I don't think not they, I, don't, I don't think they would do that to themselves. I Hold don't, on. It's I, not a new edition. It is 100% compatible. It's going to be the same thing. Right? But let's stop selling all the content that are inside these books and get them off the shelves at a cheap price. Why? Why would that be the thing to do? If it's going to be the same thing, 100% compatible, why not keep those books at $60? Why is everyone selling them? Because they're not buying. Because they're not off. buying. Yeah. They're not, they're not, they're not, that's, that's the supply and demand. I don't think it's because mm -hmm. they're going, I don't think there's people sitting in a room going, he, hey, hey, if we drop our prices, he, he. I think it's going, it's not selling, drop the price so it'll sell. It's that so why is, why isn't it selling? Why isn't it selling? No, that's what, yeah. I, that's what I'm saying. And I think it's possibly because we don't know what's going to go on. That is, it's uncertainty in the market. Yeah. Yep. And, and that's, that's the that's the gray area. And, and that's what, that's why I don't think it's I don't think they're going to come out with a new edition. I don't think they will. I think they've listened to the public and realized we're going to update things. Just again, uh, you know, I think mm -hmm. for example, you look at what Paizo came out with this year. They came out with a whole brand new player's handbook, a whole new DM's guide, all still based off second edition, but it's all they put out new books, a new player's handbook for for the for um it's a it's a player's again game mastery guide. Those those books yeah, came out right, right. A, few, a few months ago. Those aren't those aren't new editions. Okay, whole new books, and they update, well, so and they, update they they update second edition. 
that's, I mean, everyone is saying, oh, th there'll be a new player's handbook, therefore it's a new edition. Doesn't work that way. You can put yeah. out a new player's handbook that's still 5e. Yeah, yeah. You know, and, and let, let's, let's think about it like this from a, from a realistic perspective. Let's say it's 2026. I have not spent a dime on a D&D book since today. Okay, now we fast forward to 2026. You go, hey, Johnny, I'm going to run a D&D campaign at my house on Saturday nights. I'd like to see you at the table. Great, I'll make a character. And I show up with a character that I made from books called Dungeons & Dragons 5th Edition. Mm -hmm. And I pull spells from books called Dungeons & Dragons 5th Edition. And I've got my abilities and my skills and everything set up and my play style ready to go. And I sit down at your table in the year 2026 where you, you have bought all of the new and you're running it based on all of the new. Am I 110% compatible? Well, are you, well, so, so you're saying that if you bought, so if, if two years ago, if, if three years ago, I you'd, you'd made a player's handbook character, but I based my stuff off Tasha's Cauldron of Everything, you couldn't have played your stuff? Let me stop you there. Yes, 100%, because I'm making it based on a book titled Player's Handbook. You're making it from a book titled Tasha's. Right. So could you not if have I, done it? If I go, hey, can I, what can I use? And you just go stuff from the player's handbook. I don't want to go crazy. And I go, cool. And I grab my fifth edition player's handbook and bring it to your table where you're using the what comes out in 2024 player's handbook. Is it 100% uh, yes, good to go? It's going to be completely compatible. Yes. You can I don't play, understand why they're doing play, you, What? The why they're doing it because well first off because they're celebrating the the 50th anniversary of D and D the 10th anniversary of 5e they are yeah. celebrating and they and also because they are new books and let's face it there are people like me I will go buy them granted maybe there are cheapskates like you yeah. who won't buy any no, you're not gonna buy it. I'm a cheap <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm just, I want to spend I'm just saying cheap. if you're not gonna well, buy it anymore that's fine. But I will, I will, I will buy them, and and I, that, yeah. that and they understand yeah. that they understand that putting out a a, a trilogy of players' handbook, monsters, manual, DM's guide, people will buy them, especially on mm -hmm. the the tenth anniversary of Five E, and yeah. and let's face it, yeah. let let's face it, folks, anybody out there who's read the players' handbook knows that those classes need to be updated. They are old. They are the classes updated, updated from 4E? Are they updated from 3E? Are they updated from 2E? I mean, I, I, I thought like what were, happened they was were, they, they said, were... I feel like they said, we're going to do a new edition. And the audience went, boo! And they went, I'm just kidding. We're just making new books. I don't think the, <laughs> I don't think, I don't think the audience <laughs> just went boo. I don't think the audience just went boo. I think because they had surveys out. I think they, they heard from the people who said, look, if you go a new edition, you're going to lose a lot of people. And fifth yeah. edition is the most popular edition of D and D. Now let me throw this at you. I agree with you, and I like the hope. I do. I I, I love D and D also. I hate the companies involved in it. Oh my god, fix it, please. <laughs> but we're also talking about the same company that just fired one thousand one hundred people. That's Hasbro. At the peak of Christmas. I, but I know. But who, who's Hasbro. to say Hasbro isn't saying? Who's to say Hasbro didn't pull in? all the heads at wizards and said, Hey, make a new edition. It's time to sell again because they've got the, they've got the old Microsoft uh, mm -hmm. Xbox person in there that wants to monetize everything. You know, unfortunately, that's also, I can't, I, that's, that's true. But Johnny, we also can't go, this is you're, there's too many people out there going, this is going to happen. The new edition yeah. is coming out and, and you go, what's your evidence? Oh, I'm making shit up. I don't know. It's, in the it's, definition it's, of on, you know. on the take of that, I think one of the reasons why they might be, and this is a little conspiracy theory esque, but I think one of the reasons why they might be, you know, selling books, selling books, selling books, selling books, does go to that microtransaction thing where no. they're only going to have books that are special collector's edition moments. And if you want to play the thing from Unearthed Arcana, you're going to have to unlock it. If you want to play the character from Tasha's, you're going to have to pay to unlock it um, because it's not going to be available. Yeah, except but, for us yeah, grognards yeah, who yeah, save our been, books. They've been doing you that. Know. They've been doing that for years. That D and D Beyond is always. I mean, I couldn't play any. You can't. You only make six characters on D and D Beyond unless you pay. You can't play any True. of. You can't. I can't do a wizard or a Tasha's character unless I pay for the book. So, 
or or I pay for that class, or I mean the microtransactions. Mm-hmm. I, every time I thought heard last year over this past year, oh, it's going to be microtransactions. Like um, they always have been. They're D&D good. Beyond, that's a good point. It's always been microtransactions. I mean, that's, a good that point. is not a new thing. That's since 2017 when yeah. D&D Beyond got created. It's but if you can only get your books digitally, and they haven't said they're going to do that. That's just a big fear thing right now. Yeah. I, I, yeah. Oh, Michael, here's a question. That, here's a burning question that everybody wants to know, I'm sure. This comes out in the middle of campaign three or something. Are we going to, are we going to make know. our characters be 5e we books? Won't, or based no, off of- we won't switch. Um, I, I don't think we will. And I, I, I tell you, okay, here's, okay. Here's where I'm I look looking forward to it. It'd be cool if we did. I mean, I'm looking forward to new stuff. No, here's for where sure. I, here's where I land. There would have if, to be a spell plague if, if in which they, if they no, do switch no. Editions, here's where I land if they do switch editions. If they truly yeah. do, uh-uh. I'm staying with five e. Why? Because I have got. Because <laughs> you're a grognard and you spent all this money. Right? <laughs> so, <laughs> the so, same reason so, the three so people hate it. And, 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 and that is and that is exactly what that is what wizards heard. That's what we yeah. heard. It's like me, I'm not moving. I've got a whole yeah. bunch of 5e stuff. I've got a whole bunch of 5e stuff on PDF. I've got a whole bunch of 5e stuff on it's like, look, I'm I've got plenty to play for a hundred years on 5e. Oh, yeah. I don't have to I don't have to touch it. And they and they, yep. look, and they look at what happened to 3.5 when it switched to four. Mm. Wizards knows what's gonna happen if they go to a new yeah. edition. It's the most popular edition they've got. So hey, I don't believe they're going to. I think it will be an update to some of these things. Like, for example, there's the updates that need to be done with the Druid, updates that need to do with the Ranger. There's updates yep. that need to do with the races. Let's do yep. it. Let's update it. That's fine. But if you go a new edition, if you go 6E, guess what, folks? I'm not going. I think everything you're saying, Michael, is spot on with regards to Wizards of the Coast. I think with regards to Hasbro, they're going to say, hey, we are at our most po- – this game is – that this this IP is more popular than it's ever been. There are millions of people out there who love it. So let's make those millions of people have no choice but to buy four or five new books, especially all within one year. Yeah. And that will, I, I think, if, if, I if it goes Hasbro's way, it'll boost their numbers super high. And, I, and like you said earlier, it is a corporation, it is corporate America. And that's, well, you know, I, yeah. I just, I, I, if, again, if they do, I'll, then I yeah. play 5e from here on out. I, and, or yeah, or they just paper. move the piano, or they just move the piano a little bit at a time. I'm going to go we're gonna, for my, my original book fighter. Post. We're going to update the magic user. We're going to update, you know. Which is what they did with Tosh. I mean, that's it's been doing that. Yep. I mean, so Tosh's back to Johnny's Bolos, thing. I mean, that, it, it, it's been moving. Yep. So, so that, that's why they that's why they have to update the player's handbook is mm-hmm. because yep. let me tell you the 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 the, the Morden Kynans, the Tom, enough Tomfas, the uh, uh, Monsters of the Multiverse, Tasha's they've really updated Dungeons and Dragons for fifth edition, and the player's handbook is actually it's old school now. Let's let's make sure the player's mm-hmm. handbook characters, the druids yep. and the the sorcerers and all of those are updated to what Tasha's is. You know, yeah. base them off so, of pro, pro, um, proficiency bonus and base them off of other things like that that, that actually. So in a way of duality, I think probably both of those things are going to be true. They are going to they are going to update it right up to the edge of new edition. So you can still use your yeah. 2020 player's handbook, uh, but maybe the character you create out of that old handbook is just not gonna, maybe there'll be some power creep, right? Sure. You, you won't be quite as strong or, or best as and, the others. And Tasha's so. is a great example of that. When they updated yeah. the, the hunter. Okay. When they updated the hunter, yes, you could still use the player's handbook from the hunter, the hunter from the player's handbook. It's just not as good. So, and if you want to use the hunter from the player's handbook and you, if you, if you're playing on my, night you know and i'm gming i'm not gonna say no if you want to right yeah. i think yeah. i think that's the way it's going to be updated so um, well i have a hope that that, that this next version of D does what 4e did three three was great three and 3.5 was amazing and then 4e came out and 4e forced them to i think 5e is as good as it is because of the failure of 5e or 4e in the moment of 4e so yeah. worst case scenario, this thing goes sideways next year, and it makes them go, "Hey, you know what? Brand new edition, 
two years later, it's going to rock you. And it does. And it's amazing. I hope nothing but greatness. I'm looking for, I understand your point of view. Let's stick with 5e. But I'm also looking forward to see what it is. Or, or, see or, 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 or it pulls a new Coke. Yeah. Oh. And so, and go, <laughs> Here's yes. new Coke. Which, it's the best thing ever. And then two years later, go, oh, that was a big failure. And go, go yeah. which, back to five. Which they've already done with the OGL and, and yeah. the first attempt, right? They went, yeah. it's going to be a great new edition. We didn't what. mean the word edition. We yeah. just meant updates. If okay. it comes out in this new Coke, <laughs> I will stop and start, and start playing Clear Pepsi instead. Oh, oh. Oh, here there you go. <laughs> I think it's going to be all right. I think in the end it's going to be all right. It's just weird yeah. that there's very. Eh, well, I expect, what, I expect them to be a little bit. Of, I expect them to be a little bit secretive. They they, they yeah. are you know, we know what yeah. happens also when they don't when they release things before they're ready. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. Um, no, I understand, and I'm I'm looking. Next year's going to be great. Next year's going to be it's going to be another great banner year for D and D. Now I just want Hasbro to sell it. Yeah, I'm excited to see what happens here and in the network with the 50th anniversary plans that are bubbling amongst Red Dirt, right? Ah. Play in a little bit of every edition, maybe, uh, you know, something like that. It'd be fun. Bring in some special guests, so that'd be cool. I'm excited. All right, guys. It's past my bed. Uh, he noticed the time, boys and girls. We were wondering when he was going to look over and be Uh, like, oh my gosh. I've been looking, but the conversation's too damn good. So, <laughs> You're welcome. So it's and, compelling. And, it's and, compelling. Oh, okay. I'm not gonna see you guys for uh, until next year. What? what? How will I survive? How will I possibly survive? So if we look at the calendar, what I'm are gonna we- send you a picture of myself every oh, day. Michael. Oh, we're gonna do scheduling live right now, boys and girls. We are behind so the scenes. Cool, that way, our, our listeners can know. So I'm looking BTS. at the calendar. The 28th is the next time I'm gonna be in Pahuska. So, yeah, um, I think we may have to skip that one. So I'm thinking, what do you guys think about the 11th? The 11th? The 11th, yep. the 11th one, keeps us on that how do you pattern. Guys, how I like do you it. in the chat feel about the 11th? You all good with that? January 11th Fabulous. for the return of plausible deniability. Yeah. Oh, you've got that whole uh, Elf on the Shelf thing going on. That's it's the, it's, it's re- the hat's really hard. It's really firm. <laughs> so. Well, um, that's, and, you, you know, <laughs> there's just... There's a couple of jokes I can really make on hard. what I'm seeing right now. And Someone's giving it a the crying in there. You re- your hat reaches a certain age, Michael. It's okay. It happens know, to everybody. No. no. <laughs> what? I don't think Sofa King's in the chat today. I think I'm good. So uh, Yeah. So, uh, folks, everybody, uh, Sorry. January 11th, we're going to come back, and, uh, and it's going to be awesome. We'll know more about what's going on. And uh, nothing like a good firm hat. You said it, Curtis. <laughs> Brooks, Brooks going to be in timeout until then. Not right. allowed on the internet. Uh, Chick fil A is here. I'm not even sure where we are. You guys take care. Uh, and See you all. All you out there. Love you all. I'm Michael Cross. 